Now let's talk about our situational awareness. What does mindset mean? Han Solo, when the doors opened up and Darth Vader was there. <laughs> Han just shot. <laughs> and he knew what his target was and he knew what he had to do. That's, that's actually a really good example. I mean, it's a movie, but it's a good example. Mindset is being prepared to use your weapon. Not ex necessarily expecting, but being prepared to do so. Um, my personal best example of, of constant vigilance and constant preparation would be feudal Japan, the samurai. Um, they get thrown around a lot. People use the term. Uh, they have a book. Basically, their code is called the Hagakure. There's also a book called the Book of Five Rings, which is a really good read. Um, they had a really good understanding of what mindset meant and how to maintain that mindset in times of peace. How to be prepared. Because they didn't deal with the same kind of stuff we did. Uh, to a different degree. But they didn't have um, the same necessary concerns. Nobody wants to get in a sword fight. i got to be honest with you. I don't want to get in a sword fight. I'll get in a sword fight if I have a gun. We'll, we'll get involved. Um, because that requires actual, literal, moral combat. Uh, mindset is just being prepared to use violence. Accepting the fact that at some point in your life, someone may force you to use violence, or you may choose to use violence to defend the lives of another person. All it is is a personal ex accept, personally accepting that you may have to injure someone in order to save your life or the life of another. Mindset is as simple as that. It's not to look for trouble, but when trouble presents itself, to put that trouble down with as much violence as you possibly can in the shortest period of time. If we have the ability to use force, are we limited in the amount of force we can use? If I am authorized by law and by circumstance and by nature to use, a, to use lethal force against a person, am I limited in how much force or how fast I can use it? No. Now, I am limited in one way. If someone gives me the ability to use force, do I retain that ability indefinitely? No. Absolutely not. Only as long as they're presenting a threat that I can articulate, correct? Once they give us the international sign of, I don't want to play anymore, <laughs> we got to stop shooting or we can't shoot. Uh, we process threats through, a, through something called UDA. It's observation, orientation, decision, and action. It was, a, it was basically a natural system that was recognized by a person who put it into words. He gave us this really cool acronym. The American version of UDA is observe, overreact, destroy, and apologize. <laughs> Just so you guys know, that's how we do it in America. Uh, but actually, it's observe, orient, decide, and act. But what does it mean? Observation. I, I, I understand that there's a stimulus. I recognize a stimulus. Orientation is the physical act of addressing that stimulus and then processing what I see based on who I am. Orientation. We orient on our threat and we process what we're seeing based on our experience, our upbringing, our culture, our religion, the weather, the temperature, the terrain, the time of night, the time of day. <laughs> All of these factor into orientation that help us make our decision. And then we move on to decision. Guy has a knife. I observe, I orient. Okay, he's, he's wearing a hoodie, it's two in the morning, he's got a knife in his hand, he's not in a kitchen. He's not standing in a place where the knife makes sense. So, based on my own personal understanding, it would be safe for me to assume that he has some kind of malicious intent. Would it not? That is orientation. I take in the entire situation and make my decision. My decision is to go to my gun. My action may be to draw my gun and either issue a verbal command or immediately shoot based on the time compression. If he's too close, I don't have time to screw around with verbal commands. How close can he be? How fast can you move? You know? Some people like to use the 21 foot rule. I don't like that rule because it bright lines a distance. There's people who move slower than that, people who move faster than that. You have to orient on the situation. Is he standing still or is he moving? Do you feel comfortable issuing a verbal command or going straight to the trigger? Action is where we spend most of our time training. We go to the range, we put up a target, and we shoot, 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 shoot. Who here actually does UDA training? You actually do it every day. Because we UDA for everything we do. Now, can I go from observation straight to action? Only in one situation. And that is a startle response. Our body has caveman programming in it, where we have these natural reflexes to defend ourselves. Flinching is observation of action. Um, the fetal position is observation of action. I'm, take, I'm physically taking damage. I fetal up to protect my organs. It's a reflexive response, or it can be a chosen position uh, based on the situation. 
But everything else we do in our lives, from picking up a glass of water to drawing our gun to defend a life, Buddha. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can anybody give me a situation where they wouldn't act, actually process a threat in that way? Other than a startle response. So as much knowledge as we can get based on the environment, learning anything we can about the physiology of a fight, not just the psychology, um, will assist you in having a better UDA process. The more you can build into your orient, the better. Do you know what an indexing movement is? I reach for my gun different than I reach for my wallet. That is an indexing movement. There are verbal cues. There are pre-assault indicators. If someone does this, do you think maybe that's a pre-assault indicator? Maybe I might be about to suffer some kind of physical harm? These are things that factor into Orient. We, we, we want to fill that toolbox up as much as we can because it's going to move us faster through the decision-making process. Um, how about your physical reactions to stress? What, is your, what happens to your body in a violent encounter? Uh, I am a big physical fitness guy. I believe that if, you're, if there's no medical reason for you not to be in shape, then you should be. I don't expect everybody to be in the shape of a Tier 1 Navy SEAL. But your physical shape should be commensurate with what you want to survive and what you expect to encounter. Uh, in a physical confrontation, no matter how good a shape you're in, you've got 30 seconds of really good fight in you. And then you start to go downhill fast. How much do you have in a gunfight? You have the rest of your life. And how long that is, is up to you. So it is important to maintain a certain degree of physical fitness. But like I said, you don't have to be if you don't want to be. If you can't or don't or don't want to invest the time, but definitely it has to be a consideration because fitness is part of firearms. Uh, the better shape your body's in, the better you're going to be able to handle a sympathetic nervous system activation when you face a threat. Our sympathetic nervous system is our pre-programmed, it's our caveman genetic programming, how we confront a threat. When our SNS activates, a lot of things happen to the body. Some of them are academic because you can't actually measure them through feeling, so I can tell you about them, but you can't appreciate them. Uh, but we have our heart rate increases, respiration increases, our pupils dilate, our body squares to the threat, give us our full 270 degree, give or take, field of vision. We're able to move, the hips open up, we're able to move in either direction from our fret. That's basically going back to fighting tigers. Uh, our pupil lets in as much light as possible, widens our field of vision. Unfortunately, another thing that happens because of the pupil dilation is we lose our ability to near focus. So we lose the ability in a spontaneous response to see the sights on our gun. 16 to 18 inches of focus is lost. Now you can snap out of that by making a deliberate shoot. Actually stopping and saying, okay, I need a sight picture and I'm only going to shoot this guy if he doesn't respond to what I'm telling him to do. Drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife. But if it's immediate straight to the gun, you're going to be using kinesthetic shooting based on your own personal practice. So the more we practice that proficiency, the better our shooting is going to be. Uh, what else happens with an SNS activation? Tunnel vision. You can also experience what's known as auditory exclusion, where we don't hear things. You can experience a time perception, a chronological perception problem, where you either perceive time as slowing down or perceive time as speeding up. I've only met one person who had that, and he said it was very unfortunate. Um, I've, I've met a few people who's, who have experienced the slowing of time. Uh, there's a guy. Baylor University, his name's Dr. Eagleman. Um, he's not a gun guy, but he does research that follows SNS. Uh, he took these students up on a bridge and he gave them a watch, digital watch, that had zero, the numbers zero through nine randomly rotating through the watch on it. They were, if you looked at the watch, they were moving too fast for the students to see. He put a bungee cord on them, pushed them off the bridge. When they came back up, he's like, and he told them on the way down, he's like, look at that watch. When they uh, came back up, he asked them, what numbers did you see? And almost every student was able to tell him with a certain, uh, with a high degree of accuracy, every number they saw, because they experienced perceptual shift. Your eye can perceive the numbers, but your brain is set up to measure time in gross movements. Can anybody here tell me how long half a second is? We usually measure time in minutes, right? Um, our reaction time. If if I could give you a, a hundredth of a second head start in a gunfight, would you take it? Absolutely. Yeah, because we think like, oh, I don't know exactly how long that is. I can't measure it, but I know it's more than I had before, so I want it. 
And we're greedy by nature. Give me all, the, give me a big head start, and I'll take it. Everybody wants a head start. I'm behind that. Uh, being able to understand how your SNS works will give you that head start because you're comfortable with the stress and not the stress. If you can inoculate yourself to stress, you'll perform better when you actually find yourself in a violent encounter. Um, we're on the we're on a range. We're going to shoot live rounds. So the amount of stress I will put you under is not realistic. I can't. I don't have human form targets. Now, if you take a simunitions course, I can give you close to real life stress. But this is one of those imperfect arts and imperfect skill sets where we cannot train to the level of realism. A football player can go play a football game. He can practice a football game, but he knows there's safety controls in place, there's pads, there's rules. I can't train you guys to the level of a real gunfight. Just can't do it. I can tell you about it, but is my experience is going to be the same as yours? Absolutely not. Everybody is going to experience things differently. So there's certain things I will not be able to relay to you, which means even as though I try, I cannot be a 100% reality-based instructor just because of the nature of what we're training and practicing to do. But I'm going to do my best. So if you guys give me the rest of your day, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you leave here more effective than when you started. And that's my goal. And if I do not achieve my goal at the end of the day, I want you to tell me. Because you can pay money for a class, and money's nice. Uh, I'm in business. I'm a capitalist. Um, but what you've really given me is your time. Every single person here is giving me something they cannot get back. You can't mortgage an hour for a day or a day for a month. Your time is your time. It's all you got. And we don't know how much we have. This class may help you get more if you find yourself uh, having to protect your life. But your time is more valuable than anything because we can get more money. All we got to do is do some work.